Today, there are practically no happy people in this world. If we look, is a modern person happy? He has loans, he has debts, he has problems. He has problems in his family, problems at work, problems with his friends. We all live in problems, to a greater or lesser extent. Only today it has got better at work. There appear conflicts and problems in the family. It has got better in the family. There appear problems with neighbors or someone else. Isn't that so? And a person doesn't believe that, in this world, it's really possible to exist out of conflict, out of problems, but to be really happy. And what is the cause of all our conflicts and all our disappointments? A simple question. And the answer is also very simple. The consumer format of modern society. After all, the building of relationships both at work, among friends, acquaintances and in the family, is consumerist. And this is indeed so. Parents want to command their children so that they act the way their parents want. It is fair, parents are adults, they know what is better. But there is a lack of understanding that children are free personalities who have the right to choose their life. Yet what do we think? That they are little, they know less than us, they do not have life experience and often make mistakes. We try to warn them against mistakes, and thus we got too much absorbed in the game. We forget that our children have already grown up, that they are adults, and sometimes they themselves have children already. But we continue to play whom? Parents. Tyrants. Right. After all, we forget that. At first we want to protect them, help, and then it becomes our habit. And then we wonder why children sometimes don't even call their parents, because a mere fact of communication is either obedience or a game, putting on masks again. It is the same with the parents towards their children. Again, masks, masks of tyranny, masks of a smart, all-knowing, super-experienced person. Whereas life changes, and it turns out that we live in masks. But aren't our relationships at work built in the same way? To some we are a boss, to others we are subordinate. And we constantly have conflicts and disagreements. Why? Consumer relationship. A subordinate always consider his boss stupid, that he is wrong, in one or another case, and most importantly, towards this person. Well, he is always wrong. And no matter what the boss does good, he is still stupid and wrong. The boss always believes that the employee is either doing little or in a wrong way if, or does the wrong thing. Even if he does the right thing, he still does it in a wrong way. Well, this is an eternal question. And thus, we generate in ourselves a firm understanding that happiness is impossible. Happiness is the absence of conflicts. Happiness is the absence of problems. Happiness is the absence of health problems as well. It is when we are well off, we have everything, we don't need to do anything, we are healthy, we are young, we are happy. Not an illusion, but in reality, says consciousness. But in fact, everything is an illusion. Whatever we achieve in this life, no matter what goal we set, when we come to it, we understand that this is not that kind of happiness, that it was an illusion. We have achieved some results in our life, have spent years on this, yet happiness has not come. And here is the answer why we all want happiness, each of us individually. But we do not believe that it's possible, not only in the community as a whole, but also for each of us, because there is no understanding of what happiness is and what real freedom is, and happiness is impossible without freedom. When a person has freedom, when he has confidence in the future, well, then he already feels safer. And if he isn't confident about his future, then a person will not feel happy anyway, because he is unsure. And in this world, no matter what a person possesses and whatever his position in society is, he still cannot be sure of tomorrow. Well, or again, deluding himself, he can be sure that everything is fine in his life. But this life ends, and the person understands that sooner or later it will end. And this again excludes the concept of happiness.
Igor Mikhailovich, there are also people who are truly free from such slavish mindsets that exist in society and free from this disbelief, let's say. They understand that a human being is really capable of anything. Capable of anything. But these people are not heard. Well, they are not heard. Because again, people have their own mindsets. When they are told that it can be different, and a person relies on his life experience, on the dictatorship in his head that has developed into a pattern, and he cannot overcome all this, because doubts arise in him. So you come to me and say that I can live differently, that I can be happy, while I, for example, have a lot of problems. How will I react to your words? With a doubt. Why? Because you didn't tell me the very essence. Right? And people were promised so many times. Of course. Simply, yes. And again, now you have answered to this eternal question. Throughout the entire existence of religion and power, well, this is six thousand years, people are being promised that tomorrow it will be better. Isn't that so? Has it got better? And that's the answer. And you come to me and say that I can change everything and I will be happy. This very message of yours already runs into resistance inside me, which comes from my personal experience, from the experience of my ancestors, from history and everything else. Because the concept of happiness means peace, freedom, health, and such a highest degree of freedom, let's say, right? When a person is confident not only about tomorrow, but also the day after tomorrow. But if a person has problems today, will he perceive it? Hardly. It is hard, yes. It is perceived by those who feel, who are more free internally. Again, free from whom? From the stereotypical mindset of the system. He is free from dictatorship of extraneous thoughts in the head, which are not his thoughts, but which dictate to him. And when a person realizes that this is not his, and he takes a step, he acquires a certain degree of freedom. Well, isn't that so? It is. Everything is simple. It is just that in order to gain freedom, one needs to take a step. And in order for me to believe in your words, you must prove to me that I can. Again, what do we run into? Someone owes something to someone. Isn't that so? And here, Igor Mihalovich, there also arises such a question. Yet, how to help those who don't believe, those who doubt, to realize that a lot actually depends on their choice? Of course. Both their future and the future of their children. And not only. And even in general, on a global scale, on the choice of people. Even the future of the whole society depends on everyone's choice. Because without you, my friend, society is incomplete. Isn't that so? When a person understands, and he can understand only, when he begins to work on himself at least a little bit. But we are ready to engage in anything, we are ready to work on society as a whole, we are ready to make revolutions, we are ready to die for the sake of society, we are ready for this. But we are not ready to take a step away from the dictatorship of the beast within us. We lose to our consciousness, simply because it is not ours. But we do not understand that it is not ours. We and our consciousness are knit together. And it seems to us that it is we who think. But sometimes we don't even notice where a good thought comes, let's say, and where a bad one. Because a bad thought which subsequently embitters our lives. And again, we return to relationships at work, in the family, and among friends. Why do we argue? At first a thought comes. We accept it. We begin to look critically at the member of our family, or our colleague at work, or at a sports clubmate, it doesn't matter. We begin to criticize and judge someone. We begin to take offense at someone. We begin to look for something bad in him. Why? In order for ourselves to seem better. To seem to whom? To oneself. Is this possible? How can one prove something to oneself? It turns out it is possible. In pride, love towards oneself. And that's the paradox. Of course, the system simply loops us inside ourselves, and everything external, including our family, it would seem that can be closer, 
still remains behind the circle of our egoism, internal egoism, because a person has nothing dearer than his own self. Yet, at the same time, he is ready to sacrifice everything for the sake of people, society, especially relatives and friends. And that's a paradox, a paradox into which our consciousness drove us. But it is not ours. But in order to gain freedom, we precisely have to understand that consciousness, which we use, is not really ours, and it is not us. And what do you need to do for this? To make at least a little effort. That's where it all begins. Also, Igor Mihalovich, you've said that without you, my friends, society cannot be complete. Of course it cannot. We are faced with situations when people say that, well, I'm an ordinary person, I work in the fields, on a farm, or at an enterprise. Well, what use am I in building a society in general? What can I do? A huge use. After all, he's a human, wherever he works and whatever he does. He's a human being, a part of society. If he takes the side of building a creative and constructive society, he already makes a huge contribution, because he can tell and explain to those who do not believe in this. He can prove and show how to understand the very essence of this universe. If he doesn't do this, if he himself doesn't understand it and doesn't explain it to others, then others will also not know. Isn't that so? His near and dear ones, friends and colleagues, after all, you can really reach people only in this way, by your own example, by elementary explanations. Again, we return to what we talked about many times. Just ask your friend or your near and dear person to watch their thoughts for five minutes, to hold them on something. Then a smart person will ponder, since I can't hold the thoughts, my thoughts, it means they are not mine. If I don't want to quarrel with a person while a bad thought comes to me, then it is not mine. Of course, from the perspective of psychology and psychiatry, it can be explained that the person gave some reason, hence a thought appeared in us, stereotypically all of them got together and pulled out all the low-down, all negativity on this person. And such an opinion has formed in us at this moment. But if we don't want this, why does it get formed? And neither psychology or psychiatry will be able to say anything on this. Am I not right? Absolutely, that's right. Because if people controlled their thoughts, then there would be no one to turn to either psychologist or psychiatrist. That's also right, it's not beneficial. They would be left without work. It's just that people would simply choose exactly what they need. They would control their state. Because any person, well, some people observe and some don't, but many people come to this understanding that everything begins with a thought. My state gets bad, my mood gets bad, because these thoughts come, I can't get rid of them. That's all. And people notice it. Therefore, if they controlled, then… Sure thing. Because a forerunner of any emotion is always a thought. At first a thought comes, sometimes we don't even notice it, but then it turns into an image that we also may not notice. And then chemistry already works that is, evil appears in us. We have a negative mood, a negative attitude, or conversely, we are driven into an illusion of love, addiction or something else. Everything is controlled by a thought, unless it is us who control it. Whereas we must… What is the right way? We must control the thought, we must accept those thoughts which we need, and consciousness must work for us, and consciousness must be a tool that helps us exist in this three-dimensionality, but not vice versa. While now, unfortunately, we have it other way around. We provide for the existence of our consciousness and live in illusion in the hope that someday we will become happy. Sometimes, yes, it even happens that we feel happy, and it seems that it will be infinite. But the time comes, and this happiness is gone, like water from the palm of your hand. Everything is gone, because this world is temporary, and there can be nothing eternal. Nevertheless, we must show that we are people. Is that conceivable? It is the 21st century, and we have wars, we have a consumer-based society, 
where we try to enslave one another, dictate to one another, deceive and hate one another. Is this normal? Of course not, right. Just to think about it, even the most fundamental religions of today exist one and a half thousand or two thousand years and longer. And we, as a community, as a whole, should long ago live in justice, in accordance with the covenants that the Prophets brought to us. But we do not. Why? A simple question. After all, any one of us, in any religion, wants one thing — peace, love and happiness. Mm -hmm. Isn't that so, Anička? Of course, certainly that's right. And the research conducted by the Universal Grain Project participants confirms this. Film — the Universal Grain. Life — love that gives freedom. The Universal Grain is a unique, fundamental project of Alatra International Public Movement, the purpose of which is to identify what values are common for all people all over the world, regardless of their nationality, social status or confession. It is an opportunity to find out what the world lives by, what people think about, and what unites all people on the planet. Kindness, spirituality, are common values. Love, любовь, and respect, и уважение. To some extent, one big family. And that is, at the core, most people are good people. We're all human. We're all human beings with uh, some... Uh, there is good in every person originally. The ability to love and the need to be loved. You see, a cross, they want peace. To be happy. I think that's that's the most unifying things that we might have in common. I think that love unites all of us. Common ground between us, it is love. And we belong to one humanity. And uh, this is where we belong to, to the planet Earth. We are united, first and foremost, spiritually. Love is something what, what, what connects us. It is love, heart. True love can connect us all, can unite us all. We all have one God, we are one. All people are united by one thing, by love. We are all united in the spiritual aspect. Love is the most important thing in the world. The whole world is family. What unites the people, that's what I say. The humanity, everywhere. They say there is no bad nation. One people, one love for us all. I think what unites us is that we all live on the planet Earth. It's just a love of life, for example, is that... What each of us does, and more importantly, how we go about doing that, can and will, in fact, determine the future of mankind. Representatives of more than 180 countries of the world, thousands of volunteers, correspondents, operators and people who actively assisted and conducted research and interviews all over the world, took part in the creation of this film. On the basis of the knowledge of Alatra, people have analyzed the sources of various religions of the world and gathered the opinions of famous scientists, representatives of communities and nationalities what is the essence of human life and its purpose? On the basis of the key knowledge from the books by Anastasia Novik and videos with the participation of Igor Mikhailovich Danilov, it became possible today to collectively identify the universal grain which lies at the core of all beliefs and cultures. Deep feelings, which we live inside by, are common for all. And each of us carries this piece of the whole. Love, true nature. That's what we carry within us. And I would also compare that to freedom. You can't put it into words, just like words they won't give it. It's like, uh, it's a great feeling of like uh, fulfillment. I don't know, love, yeah, something inside. When one has inner beauty, it is reflected externally too. It's actually the energy, the emanating light, in fact. In poverty, they're all the same. When we say a planet, we are all one in the family, 
with equality. All people all over the world are born with a light inside of them, a goodness inside of them. Everybody has something inside that goes back to their essence. There's this pure love that we have very deeply inside. And when everyone is united by this, there's nothing else that is say in front of it, of love, of being kind. You can be friends and you can get along, even though you have different opinions, politically and religiously, different colors and uh, everything different. But you can get along and you can live together and work together. Don't have barriers. Don't think he has enemy, he is bad. Uh, any color, any faith, any language, Friendship is all that's going to win you. Now we have a new issue, for example, it's only an example, it's uh, climate, climate change. But if there are not unification between the people, we will not uh, find a solution. We need this unity. To try by our example, to be honest, to do good things, to do, play a responsible role. To live uh, in a good condition whatever they may be. But if we respect each other and accept each other as we are, then everything will be perfect. We will have no wars and no conflicts. We will just have a wonderful life which everyone dreams of. Love and beauty is what saves the world. This unselfish love is what changes a person. A place of brotherhood, sisterhood, and a place of love, genuine love, agape love we call it in Christianity. And I think the world would be a much better place to, to live in. Film, the universal grain. Life, love that gives freedom.